Hey guys, Clint here with ADS today. So today we're gonna to do the install on one of our Alice conversions. So we have kind of two basic flavors of Alice conversions. One is converting from a 68 RFE, and the other is converting from an ASIN 69 RC, or in some cases in the earlier trucks, the ASIN 68. For the most part, you know, the big popularity on these vehicles is taking your 68 um, RFE out of the vehicle. Um, or the ASIN 69 out of the vehicle and upgrade into the Allison. So this happens to be a 14 truck, which generally, you know, we have 13 different kits all the way back from the 5.9s up to the 2022-67. And most of the installations are the same, they, the basic Allison transmission, the wiring harness, the ECM, or TCM, excuse me, the uh, translator module and then basically driveline. So it's, so it's relatively straightforward. Every, every couple of years, you know, there's a little bit of a break, like the transfer case might mount just a little bit differently, those types of things, but for the most part, it's all the same. So what we're gonna show you today is how easy it is removing the transmission, which we've already done that. We're not gonna waste your time on what it takes to take the transmission out. You all know that, but we wanna make sure that you have a good idea of exactly what it's gonna to take to install the transmission. And that means looking at, checking out the flex plate, installing the transmission, making the little bit of transfer case mod so the transfer case installs behind the transmission, working out your drive lines, installing the wiring harness, installing the uh, translator module, installing the TCM, and basically firing everything up. So pretty straightforward. And like I say, there's no wires that you have to cut and splice on this. So you guys are gonna get, get, get through this video and realize that this is probably about the easiest installation you can do. So in other words, if, if you can R&R &R transmission, if you can remove a 68 RFE from a, from a vehicle and install it and go through your quick learn, get it full of fluid, put all your nuts and bolts in, plug in your wiring harness, you are fully qualified to install or upgrade to our Allison six-speed automatic swap for all the Ram vehicles. So we're going to get started, we're going to lift this thing up in the air and we're going to slam the transmission in the start with and kind of go through, you know, step A to Z. So stick with us. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to walk through a couple of the parts of this kit. So first of all, what we have is our main wiring harness. This goes from the TCM to the transmission. This guy goes inside the cab, has your data link connector. You have your transmission control module. You have your, this is really the secret behind making everything work. The translator module basically takes all the information from the vehicle, translates it to the transmission and vice versa. And then some other little components like our shift linkage piece that I'll show you later. This is the manual linkage for your park reverse neutral drive low. Your motor mount have a nice little thing of uh, nuts and bolts. So everything is packaged really nice. So you have everything in the kit that you need. You're not gonna have to run the hardware store or anything else. So these just happen to be the studs that go into the transfer case. So you saw this if you, this earlier, the way we put everything together. It's basically our ring, our clocking ring, and the reluctor. This is the speed sensor that the TCM looks at to know what vehicle speed is. So is that when we press that reluctor ring on, that's all you have to do there, and then you take these bolts and you bolt on your clocking ring. The clocking ring only goes on one way, okay? So some models, we have a cast extension housing, so you don't need any of this. And you'll see the, the cast extension housing on the back of the transmission, it says ATS on it, and it's a, it's a very heavy duty casting. In some cases, we use the factory extension housing, in some case, and, and, a, and a clocking ring. In some cases, we use our ATS cast extension housing. It's very straightforward. When you see the kit, you'll know what you're getting. But regardless, this is what it basically takes to mount the transfer case to the back of the transmission so it's clocked properly, has your speed sensor, has everything you need. We've, we've made this really super easy, so like there's, there's, there's no fuss with it. So getting back to the harness, what we're gonna do is, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run this this main harness, we're gonna mount our TCM, okay? So the TCM is gonna mount up into the, in, into the fender well, which we'll show you here in just a little bit, you, but literally the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna remove the fender well from the left front of the vehicle, so your driver's side, 
front of the vehicle and that's going to access the bottom side of the of the tipum and the electronics it makes it really nice and easy this will bolt basically bolt up into the fender which we'll show you in a moment and then you're gonna they're gonna you're gonna plug this in the TCM here's your bolt right so this bolt when you when you plug it in when you screw it in then this bolt you just tighten up and it this makes a really nice firm connection where that plugs into the TCM at that point you're basically done mounting the TCM in the harness okay this guy is going to plug into this one which goes in inside the hood and I'm going to show you how that works right this plugs right in so this will be outside of the fender well or I'm sorry the firewall this will be on the pass through on the firewall so we're going to sneak this through the firewall which nice thing about RAM is all the vehicles they all came with the standard transmission and there's all two bolt location that you pull that out and that's where the clutch rod would go through so we make a nice grommet you pull that factory piece out and you slide this through and then you button it up so we'll show you details here in a little bit then at that point you basically have your fuse box so these are fuses you know if you open this up then you have basically fuses and relays in here so that's so generally most models we use all the factory fuses and all the factory relays that the vehicle came with to control the transmission in some models we have to add, actually add a relay or a fuse box it just kind of depends but for the most part again no cutting wires or splicing any of that other garbage the only loose wires you have are basically a ground an additional ground that you're going to ground up and then you got a power and ignition wire so very very simple and then when you follow the loom a little bit farther down you have these guys so this is your data link connector it looks real familiar right you plug in your data link connector and then this is the programming port so we can plug in so we can program in the future or if we need to make a change you plug this into the translator module okay this translator module bolts in on the left side kick panel right where your where your foot is so you pull the kick panel out right beside the brake pedal and the accelerator pedal and you remove the TCM on the ASIN models or if it's a 68 model, you literally just bolt this up. We have factory bolt up brackets. So this just bolts in like totally factory. I mean, you, you just can't get any cleaner. And this basically connects like so. And then this guy is, goes into your security bypass. You plug that in and you plug that right into the fuse panel. And that's how you get your data into the vehicle. So I like to say all plug and play. So you have your, your, your uh, data source here that goes to the CAN information. You have your translator module. Okay, and then with the translator module, you can access the TCM and the translator module from these two data link connectors. So they bolt right up underneath inside the firewall. So you basically have like a, you can use a snap on scanner. You can use a uh, Allison Doc software. You can use EFI Live. Anything that will communicate with an Allison TCM, we keep that open architecture. So you can access that, modify it, whatever, if you need to. Now, we send you this TCM fully calibrated with the calibration for the particular vehicle so we have you know probably 20 different base calibrations that we kind of start with based on what year it is what your axle ratio is 2500 3500 cabin chassis um, whatever combination right we've done so many of these we pretty much know that you know what calibration we're going to need for us for the particular vehicle um, once we get it in you know if we wanted to make it a small change say miles per hour or shift quality or whatever then easy peasy i mean just plug it in you can download your calibration put it back in change it whatever so all those tools are available but generally we found that i mean it's probably maybe like five percent um, of vehicle owners once we do this install you know need to go and make any changes you know nice thing is you can make the change so we're not roped into like all the other conversion kits out there where they give you a basic bus calibration or a dump truck calibration or some analog calibration that can't be modified our stuff is completely open architecture and we did that for a reason we know that every vehicle needs a specific calibration and don't be fooled if you think you can take a calibration and stick it into all trucks you're wrong you know it just doesn't work that way that's been proven throughout the industry and again that's why we spent so much time making sure this was open source so we have all the ability to make any changes we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, our main harness. We're going to we're going to run it through, um, get that set up. We're going to take our secondary harness, install it, 
mount our translator, um, kind of bolt all this stuff in, and that will be basically the wiring portion. Now, this section, after you do it a few times, I mean, you're talking like, you're talking like an hour or two of installation. You know, taking your time, running all the wires, going, and it's all plug and play. So you're gonna, you're really gonna be impressed. You know, I mean, you're really gonna dig what, what we're offering here, and the, the, just the, this the ease of easeability of install. So we're gonna get started. So Edgar is gonna uh, go ahead and raise this thing up, and we'll start with the uh, fender well here, that you see. And as you kind of take a look at the fender well area, this is where. So since I'm here, I'm gonna show you real quick how the TCM mounts. So we pulled this fender well out, right? So here's your battery tray, factory electronics. So this is going to go basically right up into here and mount. And then the connector is gonna plug into this and go down to the transmission. So very, very easy. Um, and one other little thing, if you can see it here, is this guy, okay, that's the hole up here where my finger is. That is where your clutch reservoir typically would go in a standard transmission. And because we're an automatic, and this is a RAM vehicle, they all have this little access cover, so from the inside, we're gonna remove the two 13 millimeter nuts, take those off and take that plate out, and then we're just gonna slide our harness right through it and then put a grommet on it. So just like super clean, easy. The uh, TCM with the bracket, um, it takes a 13 millimeter bolt up on top uh, with the bracket that holds up the uh, hood, um, and then it takes a 10 uh, millimeter bolt, it goes on, it holds on to the horn as well, um, so there's, uh, it's all custom made. Um, we have uh, both for the hook and for the bolt. They both go up on here, right up in the fender. Go ahead and do that. Okay, so we have our 13 millimeter wrench. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and tie up the uh, upper bolt. That is the one that holds down the uh, hood bracket itself. Um, we go ahead and tie that down. Um, that is tight. So now we grab our 10 millimeter wrench. We go ahead and tie up the, uh, the 10 millimeter bolt that's holding on to the horn itself. Uh, that's going to be the lower bolt closest to the uh, radiator. Okay, that's tight. Um, so now we, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we connect the horn. Uh, we plug it in. Make sure we don't leave it loose or unplugged. Okay, that's plugged in. So now I'm gonna grab the harness. This is the harness that goes down to the transmission itself, connects to the uh, um, TCM, and then it runs down to the transmission. So what I do is I, uh, I run it from right here, from the side of the uh, wheel, fend, wheel fender. So I run the part that goes down to the transmission first, from right here, I have access to push it down with no wires, no uh, uh, plugs getting caught up. And as well, I have the space to grab it from down here and kind of work it down. So now that we have the uh, bottom part, the part that goes down to the transmission down, so what we want to do is we want to connect the one that goes into the TCM. We go ahead and connect that one. And so once again, there's a bolt here. Once you tie it down, um, that's what actually gives it the uh, proper connection to the TCM. Okay, we'll grab them. So now we have a, I, I just use a gun with an eight millimeter uh, socket. I go very smooth, very uh, gentle on this bolt. We don't want to over tie it because then we can strip it and in order for it to come back out, it would be a, a big mess. Okay, so now that I have the plug already plugged in, I have my um, harness running down to the transmission. Now I'm gonna start working on the part that goes into the cab uh, from the engine bay into the cab. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that one. 
That's this one here. This is the one that takes the uh, relays, uh, fuses. These wires go up into the engine bay as well. Um, you have your ground wire, you have your positive wire, and then you have the wire that goes into your fuse box. We will show you guys what, how that's connected. So this one here, this is the one that goes into your controller inside of the cab. Um, this one has to go in through that uh, uh, factory hole that they have on the firewall um, once you get that uh, cover off. And, and this one as well, this one goes into the cab. This is our, actually our OBD2 connector. This is how we can scan the transmission to see what's going on with it. And as well as this one, this one connects also to our OBD2 connector and it gives us access to read the codes. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, first, I wanna go ahead and put the uh, plug that goes in, in into the controller first. Um, because the spacing of that uh, factory hole on the firewall is pretty tight, so this one goes in first. Oh, you know what? I got to get that bracket off because I put the bracket back on, so I can. 15 millimeter nut that uh, that I just took off. It takes two of them off of that cover, the one off the uh, uh, firewall. Um, it, right underneath the uh, whole uh, column it's right there I mean it just has two nuts you can see it right away so so you have to take off the uh, two nuts from the inside of the cab and then what we do now or let me go up here. okay so now that we take those up uh, him to get a, a picture of it this and way. Can reach in there and pull it out. Yeah. So figure out what height you need to get in there and look at that. Um, this so is probably a good so right It's going to be that one right there. I can get That's it from right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is the uh, um, cover that we took off the two nuts inside the cab. So what we want to do is we want to work with it. Um, sometimes because of the insulation, it gives you a little bit of a hard time to pull it out. You just have to rock it back and forth. There it goes. So this is the cover. Um, normally it's one piece, uh, but this is the cover, the one that has the two nuts in the cab. So what we do is we put this one down to the side. Uh, we go ahead and grab our harness. This is the harness that goes in the cab. Um, once again, we start off with the connector that goes into the controller first. So that one is in. So now what we want to do is we want to, since we still have to put our, our OBD2 connector and then, well, both connectors inside the cab as well, you want to go ahead and start with the bigger one because you have more space. So you gotta kind of, gotta kind of bend the wires just a little bit so that they run together. Instead of it being like this, you want them running together so that they go in the hole properly or easier. Okay, so now we have uh, all of our connectors that are going into the cab already in that, in that, man in that factory uh, hole from the firewall. So now we have our connector that goes right here into our uh, um, TCM. And then we have the ground and the other wires with the fuse box that go up in the engine bay. So we put those towards the top, try to make sure that they hold on to something so that they're not up in the way. Since we have those two now, we go ahead and connect our harness that goes from the TCM to the controller. So that's already connected. What I did here, I trimmed down a little bit of the, uh, of the, of the frame um, just so that once we put our, our uh, fender wall cover, it really doesn't affect us in any way we actually can just kind of scoot them in there where it clears out any of any pressure pushing down the cover so now what i do is 
kind of match them up here. And then I have this harness running down right here, so I'm gonna grab a zip tie. Zip tie this so that it doesn't have anywhere to move. So this is our uh, zip tie, a big one just enough so that it goes around both harnesses coming out of the uh, TCM. And then we also go around this, uh, loop it around the, 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 the uh, uh, factory harness that's already there. And then there's that. We're just gonna start working on the uh, top part of the engine bay. Okay, so now, since we have our uh, harness going into the cab, we have it already tied down to the uh, TCM. Um, we're gonna start working on the top part of the engine bay section. We have our fuse box. I will normally put a zip tie here. Um, this one here bends a little bit. So I kind of bend them just enough, or I guess this one doesn't bend. There's ones that do. Uh, so just kind of zip tie it here so that you have quick access to the fuses, relays, whatever you're working with. Um, so then you have your ground wire here. It could go straight to the battery. Um, I just go straight to the frame. Uh, there's a ground wire connector here with a stud. What I do is I take the whole bolt out with the, the, the whole stud with the bolt, one piece, take that out, run the wire as back as possible behind every uh, or, or any accessories that you may have there. All trucks are different. So what I do is I grab a uh, 13 millimeter wrench. <clears throat> take this bolt off. Go ahead and grab the ground. I go first through the original ground wire that's coming out of the uh, factory harness. Go in through that one first. That's my ground wire, it's already connected. Um, with my positive, I said I try to run everything through the bottom Try to run it with already existing harnesses that kind of just match up, look like it's part of the factory setup. So I go ahead and uh, need a 10 millimeter bolt connected here. And once uh, we have most of the harness connected, we will go and show you guys how, how we're connecting these fuse uh the, this this wire the yellow with the red stripe goes into the fuse box and that's what gives it uh power only when the key is on so once we have that already connected uh we go ahead and put our cover this is the cover where our conversion harness is running into the cab so we go ahead and put it on and then it has the two nuts from inside of the cab you tie it down It goes just right up in here, right up in the firewall. It's more of a stable location. And then we just go like this with the fuse box. Nice and tight as well, so that it's not flopping everywhere. Cut the tip. So now we will go and uh, start working on the bottom, the harness that runs down to the transmission or we'll install the transmission then work on that side of the harness. Okay guys, uh, this is the uh, install of the transmission. There's a few things that we have to kind of uh, keep our eye on. Uh, it makes it easier for the install quicker. One of the things is here up on our flex plate, um, we have a guide. There's uh, 12 holes, and there's one that's oval instead of it being rounded. This is our guide to go ahead and start our torque converter uh, to tie it up quicker where we don't have to put all the bolts in first and then, and then tie them up. We can go ahead and start on this oval hole first and just 
start tying up the whole bolts that makes it a whole lot quicker the process this is our cooler line um, this right here is our harness this is the harness uh, that runs from the TCM down to the transmission okay so this is the uh, unit we have our torque converter in the bell housing so we also have the bolts on the torque converter we want to make sure we take off those bolts before we install it or else it won't uh, fit So we have, uh, we have uh, eight bolts that go in the bell housing. We got four on the right side, four on the left. Um, Want to make sure we tie them all up equally. There's two that uh, have the dial pin. Those, uh, those are the ones that I tie up first. I usually grab a uh, wrench, um, a ratchet, and I tie it up first with the ratchet to make sure that I have my proper gap between my flex plate and my torque converter, make sure I don't damage the pump or none of that. We just try to get the harness out of the way as best as possible. Before we go all the way up with the unit, uh, we want to go ahead and put our filler tube. So this is our filler tube right here. Uh, we want to make sure we put that inside, uh, put it inside the engine bay first uh, before we go all the way up with the unit or else we won't have the spacing to put up the filler tube once the unit is already stabbed to the block. So the filler tube goes uh, towards the driver's side of the uh, engine bay. I'm gonna go straight in, you have all the gap, all the space that, that, that you need. Go ahead and start off first, lining up the dowel pins. Um, you have one dowel pin on each side. So we align those first. Okay, so I have my driver's side already lined up. I'm going to go ahead and start a bolt just so that it doesn't come out of the dowel pin. It holds in there, makes it easier to align the other side. So once again, I grab. Uh, an extension, those, those, those eight bolts are 14 millimeters or 9 sixteenths. So what I do is I grab the extension the socket, the wobble socket, makes it a whole lot easier to go in there in the spacing. So I just, I tie up the bolt just enough until it hits the uh, bell housing. I don't want to hand tie it all the way to the block, not yet until I could align the other side of the dowel pin. Okay, so we have our uh, filler tubes already installed. It goes on the driver's side of the engine bay. We have uh, one bolt to the driver's side of the bell housing. Now we're just working on the other uh, dowel pin section from the passenger side. And once we connect that, we hand tie it first, um, ratchet uh, extension and the socket, of course, uh, a wobble 14 millimeter or 9 16. Um, we go ahead and then first tie it down with the uh, wrench to make sure that we have our uh, proper gap and spacing between our flex plate and our torque converter. And once those two are tied up and we're sure that we have our gap and our spacing, then we can go ahead and grab a uh, half inch impact gun and just tie up the rest of the bolts. So now that we have one side already connected of the bell housing, makes it a whole lot easier to work to work with the other side. You might feel as if you have a very tight space between the heat shield that runs on, on your uh, uh, foot panel, on the seat panel, and the whole unit itself. Might feel like it's already touching, and, and it, sometimes it will. You, you still have enough space to just put those two bolts where the dowel pins are at, just to flush the whole unit with the block. And then after that, you just uh, drop down, drop down the whole unit just a little bit where it gives us enough spacing to put up the uh, bolts that go on top of the bell housing. So now that I have my passenger side dowel pin already lined up, I'm, I'm going to grab a bolt and I'm going to start that as well. Of course, at the same time, I'm going to make sure uh, as I'm tying it up hand, well, with the uh, ratchet and the extension, no gun yet. I'm gonna make sure that I have my proper gap uh, and so the spacing between my torque converter and my flex plate. 
now that I have them all the way, I have my bolts all the way uh, flushed with the bell housing. The bell housing is not flush with the block yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my torque converter. It's turning, which tells me that I have the proper uh, spacing. So now once again, I'm gonna use a ratchet a extension and the socket. I'm gonna first do it by hand. I don't want to apply too much pressure in case I don't have the proper spacing between my flex plate and torque converter because that will break the pump. The unit will, will have to come back out. So my torque converter is moving. So I can go ahead and finish tying up these two bolts that go in the dowel pins. that one is tight now we tie up the other one and that's tight so now we can go ahead and put our ratchet to the side connect our air tools go ahead and connect our air tools uh, we have a bracket that holds on to the fuel lines on the driver's side it's a bracket, uh, it takes two of the bell housing bolts, it goes connected to the bell housing. So before we tie up one or the other, we have to make sure that we start it off first, just so that we know that it's not gonna be cross-threaded when we tie up the other end. You might, well you will have to move the factory harness just a little bit so you can have a clear view of the upper bolt that holds down that bracket to the bell housing. Spacing is gonna be a little tight, so you might struggle just a little bit. It's not that bad. So because we have the harness running up there, what I do is I connect the bolt to the socket, to the extension. So now that I, can, that I can see that it's in the hole, the bell housing hole and the bracket hole, I'm gonna go ahead and since I know I have my proper clearance from my uh, torque converter and my uh, flex plate, I'm gonna go ahead and use the gun to uh, start, tying, start tying up the bolts. So now I have all of my four bolts on my driver's side all tied up. I have my bracket that holds onto my fuel lines. I have my filler tube. Have everything that I have the the uh, filler tube is clearing or the um, speed sensor is actually cleared away from the filler tube. So now we're going to drop the unit just a little bit. We can go ahead since it's already tied up to the block. We can go ahead and get our safety strap out. This is just to make sure that our unit does not slip, fall, or create any unsafety situations with our transmission on the jack. So we lower it just a little bit, just so that we have enough space um, with, the, with the upper passenger side bell housing bolt. Now one thing that we don't want to do is we don't want to drop the unit too much because that, that's actually applying too much pressure on the engine mounts. Okay, so our passenger side bolts are all tied up already. So our, our whole bell housing right now is all tied up to the block. It's already flush. I already checked the gap, the spacing that I have between my torque converter flex plate. The uh, torque converter is rotating, so we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys um, how the whole transfer case is already set up with the bracket um, and, uh, and how we and the gasket so that we can go ahead and install that next. You good? Okay, so this is our transfer case. We have uh, everything ready to go. You have a gasket that goes in between your transfer case 
in the bracket, the uh, spacer. And then you have an O-ring that goes from the spacer to the uh, tail housing of the transmission. We're gonna go ahead and install that now. So in the kit, um, you guys will get a, a, a set of uh, bolts, uh, nuts, stuff like that. We have the five nuts here that go on the transfer case. So it holds down the transfer case, and we have the two that go into the uh, controller. But I'm going to go ahead and grab these six nuts. You never want to let go of the transfer case once it's already uh, stabbed into the transmission. Just safety precaution. You don't want that transfer case sliding off. Once you have one nut on there, then it's safe to get, you know, release, release your arms, release the pressure that, that you're applying to maintain the tor the transfer case connected to the transmission. So these nuts are 14 millimeters or 916 as well. So I use a stubby 14 millimeter wrench, ratchet side on it. Also want to make sure that you uh, tie them up in a pattern of, if you're tying up a wheel, you don't want to go one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Crisscross them. Okay, so now that we have our transfer case tied up to our transmission, I'm gonna go ahead and put a pull jack on the transfer case, which is gonna give us the ability to take the transmission jack uh, from, from underneath the transmission. It's gonna give us all of the spacing that we, that we need to go ahead and put our harness, cross member, and our dry shafts. Okay, so now we have our pull jack here holding up uh, the whole weight of the transmission and the transfer case. Uh, before we wanna uh, put up the a, a bracket, the uh, transmission mount in the bracket and the cross member, before we do that, we wanna go ahead and start with the harness that connects into the transfer case or the transmission so that uh, we have the proper spacing. Now that we have the uh, pull jack in our transfer case, uh, holding up the weight of the transmission and the transfer case, we're going to uh, start with the harness uh, so that we have, since our transmission is uh, hanging a little bit, um, we have the, uh, enough space uh, from the floorboard and the transmission to put up the, the, the uh, um, conversion uh, harness. Okay, well, now we're starting off with the, uh, the harness. So what we want to do is we, we want to make sure that the factory harness is actually riding on the top part of the case. So it's going to be on the upper side of our of our of our speed sensors. That's going to give us the proper uh, spacing to put the uh, conversion harness through that same area. So what we want to do is we want to push our factory harness above the transmission since it's hanging and we have the gap or the spacing right now. But once we go up with the cross member in our mount, then of course we want to push or we want to pull the factory harness away from the top of the transmission because that would not give us, that, that would just crush the harness with the floorboard and we do not want to cause any damage to the harness. So once we have already our harness, our factory harness above the transmission, we start off with the first Speedo speed sensor that's on the bell housing. That one has an eight millimeter bolt. We want to take that eight millimeter bolt out. We want to go ahead and put the bracket that's on, on the first sensor, put that bracket where that uh, bolt goes. That's actually holding the whole harness down and, and keeping it from it moving or it getting damaged in any way. Okay, so we're starting off with the harness. Go ahead and we want to start off with the bolt that's on the bell housing holding down the, the speed sensor, an eight millimeter bolt. We, we wanna start off with that one since we have the space. A 
above from the floorboard and the uh, harness and the transmission. We have that bracket that goes on the conversion harness. It's already tied down to that bolt that holds down the, the speed sensor that's on the bell housing. So now we're trying to we're going to plug in our harness to our speed sensor, and that gives us the uh, upper part of the transmission already connected. So now we'll, what we want to connect next is our speedometer that goes towards the mid part of our transmission. So we have that one connected as well. So now we have another bracket towards the tail housing of the transmission. That bracket takes a bolt that holds, that takes a bolt to the case that holds the harness down and in place where it won't be right or just moving around everywhere. That, that bolt's tied up, so it's holding our, our conversion harness to the unit. So now we can go ahead and bring down the factory harness down. We will eventually put a few zip ties from the conversion harness to the factory harness just to make sure that uh, we have everything nice and stable. So now we want to work with the harness of your transfer case. Want to make sure that your breather hose from the transfer case is also connected. So now we just connect the back side of the transfer case, which is the harness, to the motor. So now that, now that we have that connected, we have, uh, we still need to connect to, the only, thing, the only thing we have connected are the speedometers and the main harness that goes into the transmission. The other two connectors that we have is the one that goes the one that goes from uh, the factory harness to our conversion harness. The only two plugs that are that are unplugged right now, so we just finish up as much as we can with our cross member, our bracket and our mount. Make sure that we can get everything out of our way so we have more space to work with. And then we go ahead and start connecting this as well as zip tying our harness to the factory harness and um, taping up the ends of the factory harness so that no dirt, no water, no nothing goes in there and starts contaminating the connectors and all of that. So now that we have our factory harness, um, on this side of the unit so now it's right in where our harness it's not really on top of the unit where it's being crushed with the floorboard now that we have that now we can lift up our transmission to give us a proper space to put our our transmission mount bracket and our cross member <laughs> so so this one here is our is our transmission mount it takes two bolts go straight up into the tail housing of the unit
Now we can go ahead and grab our air tool. I'm using 15 millimeter uh, bolts. So your mount goes on first. And this one right here is our bracket. This is the one that goes from the mount to the cross member. Now, as you could tell, there's three holes. One, two, three. Uh, the way that we install it, um, just so that you guys don't get confused, the bolt that's closer to the edge, that's the one that's going towards the back of the, of the truck, so towards the transfer case. That's how, that's, as you could see, there's a longer length on one side than what there is on the other side. So you always have to make sure that the center bolt that's closest to the edge, that's the one that goes towards the transfer case. And as well, I am using two 15 millimeter nuts that go from the mount to the bracket. Okay, so we have our mount, we have our bracket. Uh, so now we're gonna work on the cross member. Okay, so our cross member is already on, um, installed. So now we can go ahead and lower the whole unit so that the uh, uh, bracket, the transmission mount bracket and the cross member pretty close to each other. It doesn't have to be sitting on the cross member because you still would, you still have to move the whole unit from one side down to the next just to line up the whole bolts. It's not that much, but you would still have to just kind of move it a little bit. So you don't want the whole bracket sitting on the cross member just yet. So in the kit as well, you will have uh, three bolts with three nuts. Uh, these will go on those holes that I was just explaining earlier on the bracket. Okay, so now we have two bolts of the three bolts that go on that bracket uh, to the uh, cross member. On the third one, the one in the middle, that's the one that takes um, the bracket, takes this bracket here that's on our uh, conversion harness. That one gets tied down to that bolt. That keeps, it, keeps the harness nice and steady. And now that we have those three bolts already in there, hand tight or hand started, can go ahead and grab our pull jack out of the way. So now that we have the three bolts already uh, hand started, go ahead and grab 18 millimeter socket from the bottom, that's the nut, and a 15 millimeter. And that actually is uh, most of it. Um, the transmission side from here, what we have to do is just our torque converter, which is just like a 68 you have that spacer in the uh, behind that uh, flex plate housing you have that um, the hole you take that bracket off or just get it loose you have that space to go in, into the torque converter bolts uh, there's 12 tor torque converter bolts there and the next thing that we have to do here is our dry shafts um, either with the bracket or you would have to get them uh, custom made okay guys uh, we have our cross member harness ready uh, connected to our uh, unit we have the unit. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the uh, torque converter bolts. Um, it's just like the 68. And after the torque converter bolts, what we do is our uh, dry shafts. And then uh, we should get this guy on the road uh, sometime soon. Thank you guys for your time.